it, right? It's the last change, which is a you know it's a brave thing to say, but I think folks are saying it because the kind of computer network or the IT network starts to operate like every other mature network. You know, so cloud could be the final resting place of IT, which is why everyone's so into it. So do you buy that? I mean, we asked Pat, you know, where this, we've been around for a while, where does this sea change fall in the, in the big inflection points in the industry? What's your opinion? Do you think it's bigger than all the rest? Or? I, I do, yeah. Yeah, yeah because um, I, I think we had, we, we had kind of a run at it about 10 years ago. Um, internet came along and application service providers and utility computing, but the technology kind of wasn't quite there to achieve what it is we're talking about now. I, th I think here we are with, you know, kind of virtualization pretty much mainstream, uh, and a lot of the management technologies haven't advanced, and the economics, um, you know, it's much cheaper to reduce storage and servers and, and all this kind of stuff, and everything feels right for the, the shift now to happen, which is, you know, why you've got almost 20,000 people here at VMworld this week. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times the hype precedes the actual business value, you know? It does. And so it in, back in the late the 90s, right? So, yeah, it always does, but in, 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 the, in, the, in the scale of the late 90s, we may be now starting to see some of it come to fruition, to your point. Yeah, I mean, this shift, it, it's not going to happen overnight. Um, so it's probably not going to, we're not going to be done by the end of this year or, or probably even next year, but these shifts do tend to happen over a five to 10 year period. And you know, the, the, the scary thing for vendors and sometimes you know, the scary thing for folks in IT is, is companies go out of business and uh, skills are lost, uh, but you know, new leaders emerge and skills are gained. And so everyone's kind of looking around thinking, okay, how should I adapt my career or you know, a vendor like EMC, how should we adapt our strategy to take advantage of this? And we, you know, we, we've got to beat it or, or take advantage of it before it kind of, or the competition take advantage of, of us. Jeremy, you, you mentioned earlier before we got on that uh, you're doing a lot of new things in marketing inside EMC and the whole sea change of cloud computing with mobile apps and you know, Apple I, uh, I App Store and, and technology requires companies in IT to do things differently. You know, the consumerization of IT, mm -hmm. where IT is producing services for essentially their consumers. Yeah. What can you? What do you see in terms of new things that they people are thinking about? Are they thinking differently? They have to think differently. Share with the audience what you're thinking mm -hmm. and how you approach your job. You manage a big budget. EMC is a big company. They're publicly held. Um, they own um, VMware. So you're in charge of a, a large budget, and you're, you're working on new things. So what can you share mm -hmm. about what's being thought differently? and what, what cloud enables. Yeah, I mean, we, I, I, I do think there's a huge shift going on. Um, for the first time in my career, I mean, I've, I've been doing this you know, 20 years or so, uh, the consumer world, the real tech revolution is happening in the consumer world. I mean, you, you mentioned the consumerization of IT. Um, it, it's a little bit humbling at one level because it was always the enterprise guys that told the consumer guys what to go do. You know, personal computer, for example, right? Yeah. I mean, it was Blackberry. Right, right, right. Uh, Standardization. It, it kind of feels a little bit uh, weird to have the consumer guys now driving the revolution, and it is having a huge impact on uh, on the business world. I mean, you saw in Paul Moritz's keynote this morning an app store-like demo for getting access to IT applications. And, and look, we, we can't ignore this in, in marketing. Um, you know, we try and reach a couple of audiences, at least a couple, our customers, our partners, and, and even our salespeople internally. They have smartphones, they, they have iPads, and the most effective way to, to reach people is, uh, is using that uh, channel. Uh, social media's big. Um, you guys know a little thing <laughs> uh, too about social media. Um, we, we don't need email addresses or, or go back 10 years, direct mail addresses uh, right now. We need fans and, and followers. That's how we get our message out. So. We, we do need to recondition uh, a bunch of folks in marketing to think a little bit differently as to how we reach our audience. It's interesting, the, the expectations of users have changed from that PC-centric chain to the desk um, to, hey, I want to watch the Cube video, but I want to have it on my iPad so I can walk around the office, or uh, a young person who says, I don't use email. So talk about the, from your research and your view of the market, and the, you're reading the signals, what is the preferred user expectation? I mean. Uh, is it complete IT um, inv being invisible? Is it IT is like now kind of like water and electricity? Frictionless, right? I, th I, think, I think folks, I mean the one word I'd use to describe it is folks want like a frictionless experience. I mean the, the thing I love about the iPhone phone and the App Store experience is, you know, hey, I can be sat having breakfast with my kids. Hey dad, can I have that app? And, Okay, so not even the friction on your wallet is not that great, right? It's, it's 99 already, it's already uh, embedded, so it's a direct <laughs> right. withdrawal. It's 99 <laughs> cents, and, and I think in the business world, um, you come to work and, and, and it's always like everything is so hard. Why does it have to be so hard? And 
you know, business I'm in, marketing, I'm sure, you know, we've got the, the customers that are dealing with EMC, it shouldn't be so hard to get access to the information they need. For the salespeople, it shouldn't be so hard. And so I think we, we can kind of leverage a lot of this consumer thinking to push information through the channels that we as consumers are used to. And if it's frictionless, we're going to use it more often. How do, you, how do you be both a business leader for EMC and a change agent? Because you have innovative ideas and you have to go back, and EMC is a very conservative company, and, mm -hmm. and uh, you've been kind of a maverick in your career, and we won't talk about some of the things that have happened marketing-wise, but, but uh, <laughs> it's the talk of the show. But You're you going to show some photos on <laughs> <in> it? <laughs> <laughs> the banner. Um, no, seriously you got to be a change agent. So how yeah. does someone drive that kind of change? And cloud computing has that same element, up and down, infrastructure applications for development, and end user, what do you do? I mean, how can you? I think you're not going to figure it, you're not going to be scared of failure, right? I mean, I've heard the, 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 you know, the saying, you, you kind of you know, fail, fail often, or fail quickly. Fail fast, uh, yeah. Fail, fail fast, yeah. I mean, uh, I think, you know, here on the West Coast, I mean, that's been almost the mantra yeah. of, of Silicon Valley. And, I kind of pride myself on, on coming from England, I mean, um, which is very conservative. You yeah. think New England's conservative, oh, man, you want to go to old England. Uh, <laughs> kind of moves west, right? <laughs> yeah, and you, you go to the west coast, and the thing I love about the west coast here, people are like, hey, give it a go, go for it. And yeah. and, and you've not got to lose it's that. It's rewarded. Failure yeah. as a learning is rewarded, not as a handicap. It, it absolutely is, and it, you know, it's a journey, and, and this journey to the, to the private cloud that folks are going on, uh, nobody knows all the answers but you'll never get there if you don't take a few risks uh, along the way. And I, I do feel that, that business leaders, at least, are, are ready for IT to take a few more risks in order for them to be more flexible so that they can drive more, more innovation for the business. So, so proof uh, of concepts would be a great example? Yeah, and, 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 tests. It, yeah and, and the thing is, that the day where we had like two year long projects, and, and certainly in IT, but, but hey, you know, in marketing, yeah. the idea of a, of, a, of a marketing campaign lasting six or nine months. Marketing's got IT in it too, right? Yeah. I mean, it's all uh, we, we, we cannot execute our marketing campaigns without IT, uh, but a campaign these days, I'll know within hours whether a campaign is being successful or not. Um, and so the idea where you would plan for a, a couple of campaigns in a year, that those days are gone, you could roll campaigns in, in 30 days. And so I want responsiveness out of IT because I don't want And data drives that, right? The data revolution. It's a feedback loop, right? I execute, I've got to look at the data because I want to refine the campaign and, and what I might run in the next 14 or 30 days might not be the same as what I've ran for the last 14 or 30 days. So marketing is unbelievably IT centric and, and through things like social media, we're able to reach audiences unthought of. I mean, we, we, we produced a a video, um, a social media video about uh, maybe a month ago featuring um, Eric Estrada, you know, Chips, everyone yeah, remembers Punch, right? A million views yeah. on YouTube. We saw it. Well, so, so <laughs> the idea that we could, people saw it. we could spend whatever, 20, 30,000 bucks, produce a video and get to a million two people in a week, yeah. that's ridiculous, right? Yeah. We could never do that before. Yeah. Um, we have thousands so. of people watching right now and yeah. no promotion. Yeah. All word of mouth. Thank you very much. <laughs> you know, we were talking about innovation earlier. Um, we had Tom Georgens on before. Pat, we're talking to Pat, we had uh, uh, senior execs from QLogic. Mm -hmm. And we were, talk, we were talking about 3PAR, obviously they're yeah. in the news. Um, clearly an innovator, and somebody made the point, hey look, they made a lot of the, the, the traditional companies like EMC better, right? Yeah. At, at first people said, ah, thin provisioning, you know, why would we want to do that? We'll sell less storage, and now yeah. everybody's doing it, right? Yeah. And it just makes you more competitive. There's a sort of an analogy in the IT side. Mm -hmm. We've had a number of CIOs on said that when we look at IT services now, we begin to benchmark ourselves against cloud service providers. So there's a really yeah. interesting dynamic. Where does the cloud service provider fit into your whole you know, marketing philosophy? Yeah, yeah, it's a great question because when most people think cloud, they, they don't think private cloud, right? They think you know, the external public cloud, you know, compute or storage resource out there on the internet, and Googles and Amazons and so on. And um, we think that uh, folks will want to take advantage of cloud service providers, um, but in order to do that, uh, I think they're, they're, they're going to ease their way into it. I think they're going to uh, 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 take on a project or two internally, start to transform their own IT infrastructure to a private cloud, and, and I think then if there's a seamless way to uh, take on board external kind of compute and storage resource in a, a safe, reliable way, then they will. And I think what a lot of people fear is, I'm going to put something out in the cloud and then that cloud provider goes under, and then what? What do I do? Well, I think what folks want is this way to move applications out there and then move them back again, or, or move them anywhere they want. And it's not until I think the likes of you know, VMware have come along and provided that kind of technology layer that allows you to do it, 
that really it opens the market for the cloud service providers. But I, I think increasingly you will see this federation of workloads out to the public cloud. Um, and, and look, I, I think there will be folks who are going to go deploy things on uh, the Googles and Amazons as well. Uh, but I think it'll be a specific class of application. Yeah, and your, your philosophy, EMC's philosophy is different. There's stark differences between your old company, Oracle, HP, and IBM, and, and of course, you know, EMC and VMware, and, and mm -hmm. the more virtual you know, partnerships. And then of course, you know, Google and Amazon. There's, yeah. there's really, and Maritz talked about it a little bit the, this morning. Yeah. Um, what's your take on that, and, and why do you guys win? Yeah, well look, I, I think people want virtualization um, I don't think any customer wants to be owned. So this idea that there's a vertically integrated stack and once you move to vendor X's private cloud, you ain't going anywhere. Or once you move to vendor Y's public cloud, you ain't going anywhere. I really do think folks want this nice kind of uh, seamless on-ramp. As Paul talked this morning, you can move existing applications, you can then uh, build new applications, and if you want to run them in the public cloud, God bless you, go do it. And if you want to run them in the private cloud, you can do that too and uh, rely on the VMwares and the EMCs to, to guarantee that level, that quality of service or that level of security. So, you, you know, we're not really an either or, we're an and, yeah. and I think that's what makes us different. So does your marketing, um, f and maybe you can, I'm sure the answer is both, but, but share yeah. with us your perspectives on this, focus on helping people understand that piece that you just mentioned or differentiate, differentiating EMC. How do you determine where to put the resources? Yeah, it's been very focused on private cloud right now. Yeah. And, and the reason why is, well, number one, when most people think EMC, they, they think storage, right? And, and so there's a perception to change in people's minds. So we're, we're going to focus on private cloud. And, and also, I think private cloud is probably the most pragmatic step that large enterprises will take over the next year or two. And, and primarily large enterprises is our market. And, and as they've got their arms around private cloud, I think then this idea of federating workloads to public clouds based on the same architecture is going to be a lot easier for folks to understand. Yeah. Um, but we are still very much in a phase of education. I mean, yeah. no Jeremy, doubt about it. Jeremy, question for you. I know we've got to wrap yeah. up here. Uh, we've got two minutes left uh, to our next guest. But um, what is the brand for EMC? EMC's transformed. Joe Tucci in the Cube at EMC will talk with us about how the culture's changing, the still maverick culture, and, and that's normal. Um, you're heading up the brand. What are people, what do you want people to know about the brand for EMC? Yeah, it's beyond, it's beyond storage, number one. We, th we think uh, private cloud infrastructure is a great place for EMC. Why? Because certainly it's about storage and managing information. Uh, but if you look at many of the other assets that we've acquired over the years, things like RSA for secure and security and, and governance and managing risk, when you think of a data domain for deduplicating all of that duplicate data in virtual environments, that's got a huge part to play. When you think about VMware, I mean VMware is a part of the EMC portfolio. Um, we think those together can uh, take folks from where they are today to this, this kind of new virtual data center of the future. What's the bumper sticker for EMC? Right now we know this level where information lives. Is there another one that, that in your mind Bumper sticker. Well, I mean, we, uh, well, yeah. we want to be the leader. <laughs> well, we, we want to be the leader in private cloud infrastructure, right? I mean, I, th I think if we achieve that goal, I think we'll do very, very well uh, in, in this, the final transition of, uh, of computing. Okay. We're here at SiliconANGLE's continuous coverage of the Cube, and uh, we're at SiliconANGLE.com, continuous coverage at uh, VMworld 2010 with Jeremy Burton, the CMO of EMC. Thank you so much for your insights and uh, sharing your messaging and uh, overall opinion. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Jeremy. Guys.